Sauce. I'm Jake and thank you for visiting because I have been stuck in this chair for weeks. Why you ask? Let me tell you. It's because of this. And what is that? Well, my dear friend, as you may know, I have cancer. And to try and stop it from spreading, they removed a lot of flesh, muscle, tissue, and bone and replaced it with something else. And that got me thinking about what makes you you, which that in turn got me thinking about paradoxes, specifically logical paradoxes or thought experiments. You know, there is one in particular that pertains to the removal and replacement of certain things. Let's go outside. Quick little side note, I also figured out teleportation, but we'll discuss that later. You know, you should come out here too. So we can discuss the ship of Theseus. The ship of Theseus is fairly straightforward as far as logical paradoxes go. Let's say we have a ship, and it's a very nice ship, but after a while we end up replacing all the wood, and then a while later we replace the sails, and then a while later we replace all the hooks. Is it still the same ship, or is it a new ship? A different ship? Let's go a step further. Let's say we kept all the pieces we replaced and used them to make another ship, an identical one. Is this one the original, or is this one the original? Or are they both not original? What makes something truly original? I need some sand. Here we have what I would consider a heap of sand, which leads us into our next logical paradox, the Sorites paradox. Sorites in ancient Greek, meaning heap. So here we have our heap, right? But what happens if we take away a grain of sand? Well, it's still a heap. But then we take away another grain of sand, still a heap. But then we take another, and another, until we get this. Is this a heap? What about this? Or this? If we remove a grain until only one is left, is this still a heap? At what point do we no longer consider it a heap? Let's reverse it. We start with a single grain of sand. Obviously not what we would call a heap. But then we add a grain, and another, and another. When does it become a heap of sand? You know, instead of using objects as our examples, let's discuss a paradox that instead uses words. We interact with words every day, but today we're going to focus on just two words, autological and heterological. These are essential for the Grelin-Nelson paradox. An autological word is a word that describes itself. For example, pronounceable is pronounceable. Polysyllabic is polysyllabic, and a noun is a noun. Then there is heterological, where a word does not describe itself. For example, purple is not purple, triangle is not a triangle, and hyphenated is not hyphenated. The paradox comes into play when we ask the question, is the word heterological heterological? If you say no, then heterological does not describe itself. And if it's not heterological, then it must be autological and describe itself. But if it is autological, then heterological describes itself, and therefore heterological is heterological. Paradox. If you say yes, heterological does not describe itself, then that means heterological is not heterological. Paradox. Let's try something. Let's combine aspects of the ship of Theseus and the Sorites paradox and apply it to ourselves. Even though part of my leg was replaced, I am still me. Right? If my entire leg were removed, I would still be me. So at what point am I no longer myself? How much would have to be removed for you to no longer be you? Or is what makes us us our memories of who we are and of who we were? For example, you are different than when you were a baby. Obviously, you're taller, a little bit heavier, you have different hair, different teeth, and all of your cells have been replaced since birth. I mean, your personality has changed, your opinions have changed. So how are you the same person? You know, maybe we, we should lay off the teleportation for a little bit, not just because of that, but also because I've been thinking of something. The teletransportation paradox. Let's say we have a machine that can teleport you from here to there. In order to transmit you, though, the machine kills you and instantly breaks you down into all the atoms that once made you up. It then transmits all the data of what you were to another machine in a different location, which remakes you, putting different atoms in the right spot. 
So the question is, is the person who went into the machine the same person coming out of the other machine? You have the same memories, the same thoughts, but everything that physically makes you is different. You'd remember everything up to being teleported and re-emerging on the other side. Everything in between would be lost. So is it your identity, your emotions, feelings, and is it your thoughts that make you you? You know, you should come a little bit closer. When you wake up in the morning, how do you know you're the same person as who went to sleep? How do I know that when I close my eyes, it's the same Jake opening them? Maybe every time we open our eyes, we're being created again from the idea of who we are, from our sense of identity. And as always, thanks for watching.